All right, yeah. and we're back. Yeah, and we're you? back. And before we're going to start, I'm going to introduce um, episode uh, 34. Our guest, uh, he is a professional mixed martial artist and a professional fighter since 2010. He competes in the UFC in the featherweight division and became the UFC world champion when he defeated Jose Aldo in 2017 which he defended three times. He is a local legend, a Hawaiian treasure, an exceptional father, a husband, a paintball player, a gamer, and Hawaii's most famous person. He is Max Holloway. Welcome, Max. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing good, bro. I'm doing good, bro. <laughs> what an honor to have you. What an honor to have you. And you guys probably remember Steezy. Yeah. Thank oh, you yeah. for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me, man. This is an honor and an excitement, you know. To it's be a new today. start. Yes. And I know there's a lot of new starts yes. for you. So before we're going to start and talk uh, to the main man of the hour, I want to actually address something to Steezy that had a daughter about two weeks ago. Uh, I did three weeks ago. Three yeah. weeks ago. Three Her weeks name is yes. Irie. Uh, yeah. And we made something small. Oh no, here we go. And we made something small for Irie, and this is a little uh, newborn uh, <laughs> set. My daddy knows Max Holloway. It's Hell official. yeah! It's official! <laughs> it's official! <laughs> you better watch out! Yes, you better watch out! Irie's coming! You better watch out! <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, thank funny. you, man. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and while we're at it... making it real, brother. Making it real. And while we're at it, I have another small gift uh, for you just so you guys can celebrate, you know, having um, a new kid. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's something that I can't I can even start to explain in words, mm -hmm. but I know one thing that will help you to deal with the fatherhood. Mm -hmm. And... This is Blunton's whiskey. Yo, um, the one and only. Can't get limited edition. This is for you. Oh, thank you, bro. You're definitely gonna need it. <laughs> this is for me, not baby, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is for you, not the baby. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, and now, after we got all the formalities, yes, we can start. <sighs> Max Holloway, how you That's doing? Um, I'm doing good. Welcome to the Dice Man on Planet Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I, while we're here, I like to first preface by saying, like, you are the youngest guy I look up to. Oh, Shut up. I remember you. watching thank you early you. in your career with uh, with your son and everything, how you carried yourself coming out of West Side. Um, Bro, it's amazing. You know what I mean? You, you weren't man. the stereotypical West Side guy. Thank you, man. You know, and I, that's why I'm, I'm really uh, small kind of nervous you're here today. No, no. I'm very ah, excited, no, you know? No, no. But thank you for joining us today for this podcast. No, thanks man. for having me. Thanks for having me. Again, welcome. Welcome to the race. I, I have the belts to it, so. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go through DC first. Right? <laughs> you know, DC, you, got, you know, going through the rabbit hole of being an MMA fan, um, maybe you could tell me if this is true or not, because one, he does owe you a barbecue plate still. Right, yeah? he still owes me a barbecue <laughs> dinner, yeah. Does he own a poke shop? Is that a thing? Yeah, he actually does. Has he been to Hawaii? He's been to Hawaii. He come to Hawaii a bunch of times, yeah. So he know what real poke is like. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he know what real poke is. Because I just like him come back down and make sure like yeah, yeah, he, he know, gets the he right flavors and he's is. sharing yeah, the yeah. right <laughs> the right thing. Yeah. I don't know if they're sharing the right thing over there, but he know what the real thing is. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, we're gonna collect that barbecue plate soon. Well, you know, just having you over here, um, it's it's for us. It's very very special because, you know, all this the Aloha hours usually try to bring people like yourself that achieved a lot in their life and spread their knowledge and everything they experience with our listeners just so people from Hawaii and from all over the world will be able to say right he came from Waianae and look where he's right now and if he did it like it's not rocket science nobody gave but on the other hand nobody gave you anything as a gift you didn't get anything for free you had to work hard for it mm -hmm. so you know, just tell us a little bit about how did it all begin? Because I know it started very early with you. So, um, I mean, I got I was just at the right place at the right time, man. I would say, you know, uh, growing up, being from Waianae, I mean, Steve's over here know how how it is being out there. Uh, you know, it's uh, we just have a chip on our shoulder, you know. And uh, I learned that um, at a very young age that it was like. The world didn't owe you anything. I remember growing up, and I used to think, like, man, being from Waianae, we're so 
stereotypical like we was own everything and we walked around and all hotted kids and being like I own this I own that and I remember this one day hitting me be like nobody owes you nothing in this life you gotta go work for it you know and um, I was lucky enough I I remember I was telling my grandma when I was going to uh, when I was going to ninth grade or eighth grade I was telling her oh I want to be a professional baseball player that's what I want to be and my <laughs> really? grandma told me Oh yeah, how are you gonna be that? I can't put you in college. You need a scholarship. So I started looking in school. I'm like, oh man, I gotta get. That means I gotta get good grades from ninth grade. You know. So mm. we started doing that, and then fast forward two years. Uh, fast forward two years, tenth grade. Uh, Steezy you know this man. I I meet this guy named Josh Keanu, and uh, he, this tall, goofy kid. Like when we was like, he was like 185 pounds. <laughs> yeah. had, had this mohawk, <laughs> this blue mohawk that was like like two feet tall, three feet tall. It was cra- It was insane. I remember seeing him in ninth grade and be like, oh, I should just, like, he's just a goofy kid. I, I remember in ninth grade, I, I didn't even know how to fight, and I used to think, like, oh, I'll just probably beat this kid up. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's a big dude, and I was thinking, like, I probably could beat him up. <laughs> and then 10th grade came, we started training, we went to training. He gave me the ass whooping of my life no with way. one punch. He only hit me with, uh, he only was hitting me with a jab. Boom, boom, boom. Give me the dirtiest things <laughs> of my life ever. And I remember telling him, I was like, it took me years later, but I finally told him, like, bro, in ninth grade when I saw you walking down on the bridge, I was like, bro, I'll probably beat this kid up. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, thank the Lord I didn't try it because I would have been the laughing stock of school ever since then. But uh, yeah, Josh Keanu, he, he, uh, he helped me out. We ended up training. For this team at the team uh, at the time it was called Team Rootless. We had some things and then. And you did MMA or Muay Thai? We did kickboxing. I was I was we was big into K1. Okay. You know I was big into K1. Not that much people know, but my nickname before was Little Evil because of Jens Pulver. Oh, and wow. I really liked how he was in K1 and um, he was actually a wrestler wrestler fighting in K1 and was pretty sick the way he was fighting there and he was fighting some of the best guys ever with that we was watching tape and I actually. Wanted to get named after him because he fought a great striker. He ended up losing. But I was like, this is sick. And the nickname Little Evil is pretty cool. So, yeah. Ended up going that way. And then um, I always wanted to be a K1 fighter. And then that was 10th grade. Two years later, senior year, I remember uh, BJ Penn was was fighting George St. Pierre. And they released the money, like how, how much they was making. I think so. It said he was making like 60, 40 or 60K. And I was like, bro, I need to do this. You know what I mean? This is, <laughs> and but now we're here. At Thirty, I uh, find out six forty, sixty k is nothing. I was like, what is <laughs> going on? We should have, should have went to boxing or something. We were those guys, we were those guys making money. I'm like, oh man. But uh, yeah, that's just that's the little short version of it. Wow, that's insane. So you saw the fight, you saw how much they make, and you you were good though. You were good. It's not like you were like illusion. Uh, I gonna be a. I gonna. That's what I gonna do for as a career. I mean, I, I, I mean, I would like to. I would like to believe. I, I, I have self belief like a mother sucker. I mean, anybody ask my my beautiful wife right over there. She kind of gets irritated of how much I believe in myself on certain <laughs> stuff, you know. So, but at the end of the day, I, I believe in myself a lot. You know what I mean? And um, but maybe this is what it takes. Maybe this is the secret sauce. Oh, this is exactly what it takes. If if, if I tell everybody. Every, I tell anybody and everybody, if you don't believe in yourself, who else is? Yeah. Who else is? I can't make you believe in me. Yeah. So if I believe in myself, and you change people's minds, you know what I mean? I remember uh, I remember graduating in high school, uh, and my older brother, he just came he just came back from college. He was graduating college, and I was graduating high school. And I remember I was on his computer. I was just playing. I don't even know what I was. I think I was playing the game on his computer, and he was like, he's like, oh, you're graduating. What, what are you going to do? And I told him, Oh, I'm gonna be a UFC fighter, and I remember the laugh that he gave me, which was it was ridiculous. Like it's it's, it's in my mind to today. He did this laugh, this ha ha laugh, and then uh, then he told me, yeah, I think you should start looking into other things. And I was like, mm. I was like, oh, okay, well. And then in my mind, I was like, what? what is he like? I was second guessing myself. I ended up looking up like how much uh, the guy who runs the state parks make. And I think it was like, <laughs> Just to compare. I think, like, <laughs> I think it was like 2,500 every two weeks. It was like five grand a week. So I was like, oh, it's not bad. But I was like, I don't want to work that. I hate cleaning the yard. You know what I mean? I used to hate my grandpa telling me to pick up weeds and stuff. I don't want to do this. So I just put my head down and, uh, and I tried to figure out a way to to make it in fighting. Yeah, so you rushed plan A and just stuck to plan A all the way through. All the way, man. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, being that we're reflecting now, uh, and I noticed this a lot about a lot of M- MMA fighters, 
um, they get into a cross point because MMA is so connected to other things, exterior businesses and other opportunities that may not be the best thing for anybody, very unsafe and sometimes illegal. Now, coming up in the very beginning of your career, you never make tons of money, I'm assuming. No, no. Right? No. Not enough mm. to make a living. No, no, no. So how did you continue? How were you able to still train and um, survive? Because at that point, people get a breaking point, yeah. right? Where they yeah. make wrong decisions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, shout out to this man. I mean, I, I, I got into the UFC when I was 20. So I was like, I, I was just, just graduated out of eight. Uh, I graduated school at 18, and then two years later, I got into the UFC. But even when I was first with the UFC, I was... Uh, I was I was a handyman. I was a handyman. Oh. Yeah, don't ask me to do anything. For the house, <laughs> I was just a I was just a handyman. Shout out to his name was Dorsey Roberts. I think so. He still owns his uh, own company out here in uh, in the in Kanyoe and stuff. It's called Zeka Home Improvement. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I used to just be with him. And he when we had fights and we'd let him know, be like, hey, look, bro, I got a fight coming up and whatever. He's super good. He's super good as a boss. Oh. He's a, a I used to live in his studio while we was out there because he lived in Kanye and stuff. So, oh wow, he, he, he was he was the man. Yeah, Dorsey Roberts is the man. So you did work and fight like how most of them have to do. Yeah, to for a little day, while, yeah? for a little while, and then we got into the UFC. Uh, ended up uh, ended up getting some wins and ended up be able to save some money. I mean, the first year at the UFC was kind of rough. I didn't know what taxes was, so I had to oh. learn. I had to learn the hard way. <laughs> Everything disappeared. I like all oh, happened. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's he spent all the money and by the end of the year he owes them that's yeah. more like it <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much yeah 100 percent. that's mm-hmm. what happened so i was like my second year with the ufc i was like man we got to get a bonus i gotta pay these, <laughs> pay these taxes but you know what it's crazy how with that same amount of money you still need to pay your coach mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. like all your entourage everybody that is teaching you that mm-hmm. helping you to train with the same like this is it right mm-hmm. like that sixty thousand need to supply you and your team yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people don't know that. You know, it's like, oh yeah, you make this money, this and that. Like, off the back, you gotta take away like what thirty percent for taxes is, mm-hmm. is the main thing. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, management, yeah. coaching fees, and and all that is probably and and to your train trainer fees, whatever. It's probably like another twenty to 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 thirty percent again. So but also know. take to consideration that in between fights, you don't wor- you don't yeah, work. Yeah, money. So you know, that's it why needs it, to last yeah. you also. That's fucking hard, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. That that is hard, but it also makes you a business owner and a fighter at the same time, like that. Yeah, you the business. Yeah, you, know you the mean? business. The biz- you are the business. You, you know? are the business. So at the end of the day, it's just about yeah, f- all the young guys or the young fighters. I always tell them, man, just some of these guys they trip out when I trip out when I see, especially these guys that didn't make it yet or guys who's trying to come up and. And they're so much bigger than a weight class. I'm like, bro, you need to kind of stay a little bit, little bit lower to the weight and just fight as much times as you possibly can, you know? Like, maybe later on in your career, you get comfortable where where I know I probably fight, like, twice. And if I want to, I'll try, I'll push the envelope and fight three times a year. Versus this up-and-comers, they got to realize, like, they just got to be on call, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you look at my, if you look at my UFC career, I have... 20 I don't, I don't even know how much I have I have 20 plus I think so it, it, with the UFC and and more than half of them I think so it uh, actually I know so is I took on short notice like it was like 3 weeks 2 weeks yeah. <laughs> 10 days I took two 10 I remember two 10 day fights uh uh 4 weeks uh, 4 weeks notice fights when these guys like I see some of these amateurs like they're training like eight weeks, ten weeks for a fight. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? You're not even getting paid for this. Like, yeah, <laughs> for real. Cra- I remember back in the day. I mean, it, it it it's a tough time right now in Hawaii for fighting period because we have a commission that's just they're just charging mm-hmm. off the yin yang for these guys to throw fights and they're kind of putting us behind on that because I remember when I was fighting and when I was coming up as a kickboxer and stuff. I remember fighting uh, t- fighting every week. We had every week. I, one weekend I fought Friday and Saturday. You know what I mean? That's just, locally that, you're talking about. Yeah, locally. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's just how it was. Now, now we'd be lucky if we see one fight event every to what two, three months. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. It's crazy. It's, it's a very interesting too, considering that is like one of our top sports in Hawaii. One hundred percent. And it doesn't get the support like, for instance, we've been pushing for this UFC Hawaii thing mm-hmm. for a long time. Long time. And it's so obnoxious on how we haven't weren't able to work a deal. And out actually, yet. Max said it all the time. Every time he says it, bring it to Hawaii, bring it to Hawaii. Dana, bring it to Hawaii, bring mm-hmm. it to Hawaii. And it's, yeah, and but it's not Dana. Dana yeah. wants it in Hawaii. Yeah, it's not. Ah, he does. It's not. Yeah, it's not a UFC thing. It's so a, it's, it's just the commission. It's a Hawaii thing. Yeah, it's a it's, a, it's a HDA. It's a HDA issue. I mean. Yeah. 
uh, uh, you know, my wife is a professional surfer. We have we have two of these sports where we have champions in it. MMA fighting, we had champions in it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Myself and BJ and so on, Elima, whatever. Mm-hmm. Surfing, we have a world. We have multiple world champions that yeah. that is from Ho- Hawaii born. The one, the Olympian, is a is a Hawaiian born. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what yes. I mean. And and during the pandemic or doing anything like even. Even for surfing, I, I hear from from that from the surfing side, it's like it's so hard. They give them such a hard time to do this. Like yeah. even during the during the pandemic was the craziest time to me. It was like they was telling you, oh yeah, we can go to the beach and do whatever as long as you're in the ocean. Mm-hmm. But then when the when the surf league, you know, the tour was yeah. co- trying to come true, they couldn't get a permit to be in the yeah. water. What you <laughs> yeah. telling pe- normal people to go and do it? Just it just made no sense to me, bro. It's like sometimes. Uh, I mean, Hawaii, common sense is yeah. not common over here sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, mo- most times I like to think. <laughs> <laughs> but how is it? How is it? I mean, we do have a lot of talent over here. Oh, in bro, so much talent, bro. It's so much talent. It, it, it's when I was fighting, I, I moved to Iowa for like four months. and um, For a fight camp or uh, just, uh, just I, to train? I moved there to train. Okay. I, I, always th- I thought we, was, we had this opportunity, me and uh, me and one of my old uh, coaches, we had this opportunity to maybe coach and, and, and open a gym there and it all felt true you know thank thank the lord it did because i got to come back home <laughs> did not like like i love in max holloway in iowa I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I came back looking like the holy ghost it was, it was crazy i went during the winter and it, it was it was it was insane oh. the, the, the house that i was staying in didn't have a working heater so I was oh like, shit i did dress like i was going to ice palace every night. <laughs> oh, it, wow. was, it was crazy but um at the end of the day uh yeah when we was when I was up there, you could fight every week. Like us, us Hawaii guys, we get so many talent with with with, with fighting and stuff. But we're not having. When I was in Iowa, you could go to a, a bar every Wednesday and fight. So I fought a guy up there. I was like, I think I was one and zero or two and zero. I forget what I was. Or well, I think I was one and zero as an MMA guy. And when I fought a guy, the guy was like 30, 36 and twenty, <laughs> or no, thirty six and eight. I think is was his record. I'm like, oh, how did he fight so much? <laughs> it's like every Wednesday there's a bar. You just show up. You weigh in and you tell them you can fight you if you want to do wrestling, boxing, or MMA match or kickboxing. Really? And you just they just let you fight right there. It's crazy. So wait, there's a secret Max Holloway fight in Iowa right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> on the internet. I, I did not. I did not do that. He, they was doing it before I was there, so I was uh, I was tripping out about that. But like I I think so. We need we just need more competition. Need more eyes. This, yes. We just need more looks. Like I keep telling these um, these amateur guys or guys coming in, it's like bro, this is amateur. Yeah. Your record don't count, bro. As soon yeah. as you, as soon as you become a professional, it's all in all. You know what I mean? That's yeah. when they start counting. That's when you start taking, taking it. You need to act. You need to take it serious as an amateur. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? But if you're hurt, you know, like if it's not career-ending injury, like go there and fight. You know how much times I had to fight hurt, and I always tell them like that helped me with my professional fights. Knowing like, look, I did fight this guy hurt. I fought that guy. I fought him with a sore ankle. I fought him with a sore, sore wrist. My neck was kind of sore. My back was sore. But I ended up there going out there and fighting because that's the way you get the looks. Is if you lose an amateur, who yeah. cares? I, I like, I love winning. Don't get me wrong. So I understand people want to win, but it's like this is getting you ready for the big show. So you need to do as much like fight. Have that's a, why it's have a shitty weight that, cut, That's why you know? there is amateur and professional. Exactly. You need to do your shit at the amateur before mm-hmm. you go to the pros, and then there's. That's what exactly. counts. Exactly. I agree. But they don't. You, th- there's not a lot of people that are going to fight over there. Like all of those guys from your gym, for example, um, all the young boys. They don't have support over here. We, it's just that we don't have the we don't have the the uh, actual events. fights. You don't the have events. the events. You know what I mean? We don't have yeah. the events, and then a lot of and then Hawaii's already. I mean, look at the whole thing with uh, with Ian saying getting priced out of Hawaii is so expensive that you gotta work and mm-hmm. multiple guys gotta yeah. do certain yeah. stuff. But that's just. It, you know what I mean? It's like it's the world's smallest violin. You know, everybody yeah. fighting their own demons during the stuff. You know what I mean? So like at the end of the day, if you really want it, you're gonna you're gonna figure out a way. You're yeah. gonna figure out a way. Which which is tough. It's tough though when you don't have events. And I and I understand that. Like some of you guys gotta get to your guys' looks, but at the end of the day, start looking out to mainland. I know it, it costs money to to travel and stuff, but try to look for sponsors. And it, it it's in a tough time right now, but. If you really wanted it, you're going to find a way, you know? I, I, just, yeah. I agree with you. The only thing I, I, I have to say, though, that after living all over in the mainland and living in Hawaii, I love Hawaii so much. Oh, and Hawaii's the best. Once you leave Hawaii and you're suddenly in Iowa, like you said, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I know you're a fighter and you're a warrior and whatever and you're a tough guy. 
But you're in fucking Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? You're yeah. in fucking Iowa. Yeah. You you in fucking Wisconsin. You're yeah, in fucking. It's, de- it's depressing. It's depressing. Yeah, it's depressing. It is. I understand. You need to sacrifice, but and it's stuff. a commitment. Yeah, and I, like no, no, you know, no shot at anybody. If you guys had to leave, that's your guys' choice, you know. But at the end of the day, my whole career, I kept telling people I'm gonna be able to do it from Hawaii. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna do it, and they thought I was crazy. You know, yeah. even yeah. even my coaches, like even, you can ask any of my coaches, even my head main coach was like. He even thought so. I had a ceiling, you know what I mean? Like he'd always tell me, like you're gonna, you're gonna outgrow me one time, and and you're gonna have to leave. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna do it together. You know, this is honestly <laughs> something that I have to admit. That I, I, I follow you from day one, and I know that your team never changed. You're still with the same team. You train with the same guys. Even the jujitsu guys, I see oh, all the time. You have your own crew. This is, you know, this is so inspiring and this is so amazing to see that you stuck to your crew because all those guys that like have maybe one bad fight or whatever and then they switch a team and then they switch like what the f- who the fuck is this guy yeah. <laughs> after everything we've been through yeah, after four real. months yeah. you lose you go <laughs> fuck this guy yeah, for real. 100% that's what I always say and I wanted to prove because they were saying that uh that us the white guys couldn't compete with the top guys and I was like oh this is not the, are you crazy this is in my blood you yeah, know what I mean like this is in my blood like my my ancestry one of my cousins like crazy ancestry is like he found out that one of my great ancestors it was like one of the front lines with Kamehameha you know what I mean one of those warriors I Blessed. have that blood in me you know what I mean and, mm-hmm. uh, and I was telling him this is what I made for you know what I, I, and I tell people all the time like when you find something that 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 you know you was born for, it's 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 not even work anymore. Yeah, I hate I hate I hate having to not eat as much ice cream as I do or not eat as much food as I want to. But it's sacrifice. You know what I mean? This is sacrifice. If you really want it, you're gonna sacrifice. And and if you're gonna, if you're making up excuses, I don't want to hear it. You know, at the end of the day, we all we all some guys are gonna start the race. A mile in front of us, but that doesn't mean you can't catch up. You know what I mean? You can catch up Amen. all the time. Amen. Yep. Words of wisdom over here. Yeah, so yeah. let me, if, if you had to do one thing different though, if you had to, if you could change something, like do it differently during your journey, what would it be? Nothing. 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 I, t- I tell people nothing all the time because that's that's who I am. You know, you go out there, you change one part of your recipe, it's not going to be your world's famous beef stew anymore. You know what I mean? If you change one little thing, if you add too True. much salt, take away a little bit of salt, everything had to happen. And, uh, for me to be sitting here with you guys, you know, who knows? If I change one thing, I never meet Royce and never ever be on here, you know. So True. At the end of the day, shout you know. out to Royce Lee Kwai, the one and only, the orchestrator. <laughs> right on. So at the end of the day, it's like uh, you know, it's it's all mistakes, it's all learning curves, and you got you got to take them on the chain and keep moving. When did you have your uh, your son? 2012. 2012. So yeah. how many years were you in in the UFC? Two years. Actually, that 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 was uh, that's that's crazy. Cause like uh, the day that uh, it was January fourth, two thousand twelve, at like ten o three a.m., I got an email from uh, from my management that uh, that I just got into UFC. I got a UFC contract like that day. Wow! And then at like three o three p.m. Uh, he he was he he was born so no way yeah. <laughs> legendary yeah it was insane it's an it explosion insane. of emotions at once right, bro. <laughs> crazy so yeah so at like ten o'clock I was in we, yeah we was there first person I call up is my older brother that uh that uh <laughs> that laughing that, at that you. laughed at me and I and he called me up and he said oh he's like oh is, oh, is my nephew here I was like no. I just, to, I just want you to be the first one to know that uh, I, uh, you're talking to a UFC fighter now. Oh, <laughs> shit. And he Let's laughing. go. He started laughing. And, he, and this guy, he's like, a, he's like a, he, he was like a freaking entrepreneur always trying to make business. So during that business time, uh, this thing that he was working with, the slogan was, I told you so. So nah. he was like trying to tell me, so you can say it. I was like, say what? He was like, uh you can say I told you so I told him, I told him nah I'll just call you later when uh, when uh, your nephew's here and then I'll go to the phone so <laughs> that, was, that was one of the funniest days ever so there were a lot of people that doubted you oh bro the whole the whole the whole shebang bang I mean one of my cousins I freaking I made a deal with him I bet him thousand dollars that uh, that I would make it to the UFC and um he would never ever give me the thousand dollars until after cause he kept saying he kept saying that uh I told him that I would be in the tough house 
the ultimate fighter yeah house. yeah yeah. I, I never told him that i told him bro getting to the tough way is so lame like yeah i got, I got straight <laughs> into it you know yeah. what i mean like i got straight by fighting yeah. not by fucking yeah, i told him i told him if anything you owe me two thousand dollars you owe me two thousand dollars but he ended up paying he ended up giving me the thousand dollars uh the thousand dollars after i beat jose aldo he's wow. like he's like i gotta give you this you know so he had he gave me a check or whatever so I wish I I wish I I don't even know where I put the check. I it's wish I because he bet on the fight. You made yeah. like twenty off of that yeah. fight, you know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, I was an underdog. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I was like I was tripping out about that. So it's good. That was one sick fight though against Aldo. That was, Aldo. That that was, was one fun fight. Yeah, this yeah, guy. That if there was one fight that I wish I was able to go to, like man, you know? I wish you guys got to. It was crazy. It was uh, I remember. I remember uh, fighting in there, and then after the fight, I remember telling my I was I was just locked in, bro. I was locked in. I was ready to go there. Like I used to watch. You felt this guy. it. You knew it. Yeah, I used to watch this guy forever. Like this is like the moments, you know. Train to your idols become your rivals, and this was it. You know, what I mean, like I I wanted to fight this guy. I remember seeing him do all this stuff. He was like the first striker guy that yeah. was winning belts and defending yeah. belts. Everything was wrestling and jujitsu. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 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 B J Penn was like the first hybrid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but he was amazing mostly ground and and like he had to stand up but he'd he'd end like he'd take people down and yeah. they beat them up like Aldo was just doing it on the feet so yeah. this is the guy you know like I used to like model my whole game around him be like bro this is this is crazy and then being able to uh to fight him was was amazing going out there being in Rio the king of Rio fighting him there going there and Man, but you said something very important. You said fighting your idols because he was your idol. You oh, was yeah, looking. 100%. How did that feel? Like you suddenly in there. This is the guy that you were watching in your house yeah. on your couch, eating fucking popcorn, watching the fucking guy. And now yeah. you with him in the ring. I, I got I got over that moment like real quick. I don't like this guy. Like, I just no. don't like this guy. No, no. This moment I got over real quick because <laughs> in um in. In my first fight, I was it was February fourth. I fought Dustin Poirier, and that and at that time, I never know Dustin. I think so. When I fought Dustin, he's like ranked number six in the world or five in the world. He's top five in the world. I didn't know. This is what they <laughs> they called me up, and this is what they said uh, when I got the contract on January fourth. This is what they said. See, short notice fight. I was like for what, like a month notice, but this is what they told me. They said, "Oh, you can either fight a stand up guy or a jiu jitsu guy." And then I told my agent. I remember telling my agent, I was like. Do you know who you're talking to? I don't want to fight a jujitsu guy. <laughs> yeah. I'll fight the stand-up guy. Not knowing Dustin Perry is Dustin yeah. Poirier was a yeah. badass jujitsu guy too. I was like, yeah. that, this is the information you need to tell. Like, I didn't really know who Dustin was at the time, you know. And um, you know, we ended up we we ended up getting that fight. And I remember um, after that fight, I lost. Doing good, doing great on stand-up. He ended up slamming me, taking taking him out. Freaking uh, triangle, triangle arm barring me from the from the top was ridiculous. Yeah. I think it was, oh, that's the only time that happened in the UFC history. Another another history book for me, I guess. <laughs> another record, so that's good. But um, at the end of the day, I remember fight week was crazy. I I saw on, I saw on who's who there. It was uh it was uh we fought on the undercard with the FX main event. So this is my first fight ever. I, I was fighting Blazedell. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Bla I was fighting Blazedell, bro. Maybe what, 5,000, 4,000 people at most? Yeah. Like this is this is when Blazedell was actually popping. Like we would, like people would come up to the fights. It was big, you know what I mean? It was yeah. still bigger than what, yeah. it, what, it, what it was now. But, and, and that was, I thought that was big. And I remember we go to, we go to, um, we go there early. We get there early. I remember uh, uh, Jesus Salute was my boxing coach at that time. Uh, he still would be our boxing coach, that guy, but he got like a million different things going on. I don't know what is going on in that guy's mind, bro. Can't, I, I can't yeah. ever get a hold of him. But, um, but uh, yeah, so he was my boxing coach, and he was telling me, like, Max, remember, when, when, uh, uh, when those lights turn on, just stay calm. Stay calm. And I remember looking at him like, yes, yes, coach. Yes. And he was like, it, it's going to be, it's gonna, these lights is going to be bright, Max. I, I tell you, this is nothing you would never, ever felt. So I was like, yeah, and I, in my mind, I'm thinking like he's he's a world champion, like you know what he's talking about. So yeah. I was like thinking like, but nah, no way, it can't be like. Yeah, I stayed questioning like, can't be that far off of where I was fighting, right? Because it was in the back when you go when you get in there, you gotta get in there early because we was the main event before the main card. So we was the last fight before the main card on FX, like the main event on FX on the undercard, and you get in there. So we probably fought around like three thirty, three thirty, maybe the uh, Pacific Standard Time over there. And you got to get there three hours early. So you get there at 12. And nobody shows up to the fight until until that fight or the main event, uh, to the main card main starts card, right? yeah, in yeah. Vegas, right? So we're back there at 12. And I'm looking at all the fights going on. Empty, bro. 
everything's yeah. empty. I'm like, holy shit. I was like, oh, freaking, my car's back at home is more crazy than that. Yeah. And then we start getting in the mode. I start training. We not even, we turn off the TV. I remember them op- on, uh, opening up the stuff, my song playing was just packed to the gills. But was that Mandalay Bay? <laughs> like, what? what is Mandalay Bay? I think so. it sits like, 16, 14, yeah. 14,000, 16, something, something crazy. I remember, I, I remember going from zero to 200 real quick. Oh. It, was, it was, it was insane though. But, um, but anyway, that, that, that was the experience. Uh, not only that experience, that experience for what it was going back of like respecting Aldo was, uh, fight week. We got to, I got to meet who's who. Anderson Silver is the biggest fight. <sighs> George St. Pierre. Uh, I saw Frankie Edgar. I saw whoever he was the man at that time in 2012. I got to see him because they was all there, you know. Yeah. Mm. And I was fangirling, bro. I remember. Yeah. I, was like, I want to, bro. <laughs> I want to, I want to, yeah, I was like, I want to take a picture. I took a picture of Anderson. Took a picture of GSP. Took a picture of who, whoever. Saw, uh, I saw Aldo then, mm. and I was like, oh, this is crazy. And then I remember losing and saying back there after after Dustin Poirier fight, and I told myself. What the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, like what are you doing? Like, you're in UFC fighters. You, just, you need to act like it. So after ever since after that, like I just, I just act like I belong. You know, like I, I, I stopped fangirling. I st- if people ask to take pictures, I'll take pictures. But I wouldn't go up to people anymore. I wasn't fangirl. I was like, bro, this is a job. This is what we do. Mm. I, I am here. This is our, these are my peers. Yeah. I need to yeah. act like it. Like I, at first, I didn't. Nice. I was just fangirl, blah, blah blah. But you know, thank the Lord, I had that fight because I needed that fight to to open my eyes. You know what I mean? Like open my eyes. Like, bro, you gotta calm down. You, like you belong here. Act like it. Yeah. yeah. Well, which brings us back to the confidence and believe in yourself and uh, full cycle. Because if you believe in yourself and you believe you should be there, no, no one can take that away from you. Nobody. You know, can no take one can that take that it away. away from you. And if you. And I and, and and the main thing I always tell people growing up or coming or just trying to do anything, succeed in business or whatever, and they always talk to me. I was like, it is the main thing is you just need to believe in yourself and just keep it going. You know what I mean? Like, who, no one else is gonna do it for you. Why? So if you had an, one advice to give to whether it's a young fighter or a young father, someone that just wants to new business owner, someone that just opened a business, this is what you self belief, self belief, yeah. self belief, because uh, that. The only person that can help you get up is yourself. You know what I mean? And then, of course, you gotta surround yourself with the right people. Surround yourself. If if, if everybody in your ear knocking you down, dog, you stay at the wrong crew, bro. You're, yeah. you're at the wrong crew. If they keep telling you, trying to pull you away from from certain stuff, you're you're not you're not hanging with the right people, bro. You know, it's like first you gotta believe in yourself. That's the good step to be headstrong and to be like, nah, this is what I'm gonna do. This is the way I'm going. And if these guys don't don't match up with your with your visions, like, and 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 it's like way off, like, yeah, you can have some friends, whatever, and like, yeah, I don't see that going, whatever. That's cool, you know. But if they're like way off and they're like nowhere near seeing the vision you wanna do, it's like you need to surround yourself with with better people, you know. Get surround yourself with the same vision people and get after it. Amen. Yeah. Wanna diverge a little bit? Take a little. Uh, what do you say? Fork in the road. If uh, you know. yeah. I have a quick question. I want to, before we get to you on this one, I want to ask you first. Okay. You eat avocados. I do. Yeah. You eat avocados with mayonnaise. I do not. What? I didn't Bro, try it. You were complaining. I remember you very beginning. You didn't like avocados with mayonnaise. Was that a thing on your story? Am I tripping? Or did I dream that? Am I the only one? No, I, I think I, no. I think I just didn't like avocados until she came in my life. Yeah, I, bro, I thought avocados the most grossest thing ever, and then she started making me this thing called Buddha bowls, and I love them now. Yeah, now I, I, just, now I just eat avocado and rice, but not with mayonnaise. Am no, I tripping no, on no. this mayonnaise thing? I think. Why you think, eat it with? No, I just remember st- I, I have this memory of a random story from when you first got with your wife. Yeah, and I swear to God, I thought you were like. Who makes what? avocados with mayonnaise? Yeah, cream cheese. Cream oh, cheese. Cream there cheese. we go. There it's we not go. mayonnaise. Yeah. My bad. Cream cheese. Oh, it's amazing, bro. You like it now? Bro, avocado, mayonnaise, cream cheese on a bagel? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I've never tried mayonnaise, avocado. Mayonnaise, you kind of, you different. Guys. I don't know. You know, I'm sorry. You feel different, bro. Kinda, you know, mayonnaise <laughs> is everything, you know? <laughs> like. Yeah, but avocado cream cheese is amazing. Avocado, bro. and yeah. Oh, bro, amazing. I so, mean, it's amazing, bro. So you've been, you've had a lot of help with your your um, dieting since uh, wifey. I oh, one hundred percent, bro. Of... I, I I walk around way lighter. 
Yeah. Wait, but I wish I w- I mean, one thing I do wish if I could go back and change one thing would meet her earlier. Oh yeah, <laughs> would meet would meet her earlier because like, bro, like you know how much like I I'm all about short notice fights or whatever. We'd make the wait. But it was terrible. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was terrible making the wait. I mean, like, I even long, even long fights, long fight weeks, making the wait was just terrible, bro. What so, is, wait, when what? you wait 145, how much do you walk? How much? Me? I t- bro, this is like LA, bro. You got to keep that on the high. <laughs> 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 Nobody can know what, what, what I weigh, you know? Well, what is, that, what is a guilty pleasure then? What is uh, something that. Oh, like, bro, oh, I okay. love candy. I love sweets. So, we all knew, we knew cupcakes was the Brother, jam, right? brother, cupcake. Can't, I love, bro, the thing with her, I, she knows. Ask her, I love candy, bro. She scolds me. I love <laughs> soda. I'm the worst, oh. bro. I am the worst. I love I love soda. So did you make a turn into like sugar free stuff? Like like Zevia soda? Brother, or? no, brother. I take I if I'm going you're going all the way in. Bro. Okay, so <laughs> you're, just, you're jumping in the deep end, bro. This Zevia stuff, no, bro. You know? This go get I'm gonna drink it, I'm like, I gotta go run. So I gotta go run left. <laughs> So you just go cold turkey then for pretty much when you trying to not not really not not really cold turkey. I like maybe like week here uh, like like maybe once a week here and there during mm-hmm. the fight camp because after fight I'm drinking it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can't be like like I have sweets and stuff in 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 fight camp all the time because right after that I weigh in. I eat good meals like maybe the first like like uh, eight twelve hours is all right. Like I stay away from it, but like once that twelve hour hit, I'm like drinking a soda, having some ice cream, <laughs> yeah. just yeah. to get my body back into. Like, I need sugars. Yeah. You know what I mean, I keep telling them they they don't believe me, but I I think I need it. No, that's the, that's been the system though. Yeah, time, yeah, right? been the system. <laughs> so that's your that's the Max Holloway secret. You heard it here first. It's candies, bro. Yeah. That's the secret. The, can- the candies, bro. I mean, <laughs> if you guys if you guys heard what I heard, uh, what I'd eat like before like some of like the Harris Samantha fight or the Bryson Kamaka fight oh. bro I used to eat I, I remember uh, Nico Fatale like cause we'd ask like oh Nico what would you what like uh, how would you eat you know what I mean after you win he's like he was like oh like uh, protein you know like four to six ounces of, of protein and, and, and you know you gotta have some carbs and everything mm-hmm. so he's like telling me in his mind all I heard was like oh yeah one McChicken and some <laughs> French fries <laughs> So, so, you know what I mean? So, bro, like, he's, like, telling me, like, six ounces of turkey and some rice, and I'm just thinking, like, bro, this is the, this sounds just like carbs is bread, you know what I mean? Bread on big chicken. And you know how cheap that was? It was actually 99 cents. Yeah. That's dollar four stuff. It was yeah. actually 99 cents you could get a McChicken. I'd get a McChicken, no mail. One double cheeseburger, one, one double cheeseburger and mac sauce, and you just make an, uh, you just you used to take one bread off and put them together, and that was my ounces, you know what I mean? <laughs> before, before, before going to the fights. Oh, that's that's crazy. That's funny. That's classic. Oh. It's funny though that you wanted to divert the conversation into food. That, that's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, I love food, bro. We love food. I love food too. Yeah. I can't. I mean, this is what we do. Obviously, yeah. this is what we do. But let me ask you this: uh, What helped you to stay on track? Because you know, you had a lot of, you know, you had your son, you had money. I mean, financial uh, challenges. You had your family, your son, and and I see you bring your son everywhere. You have a very tight relationship. You show all of us, all our dads. You know, all the dads out there that. You know, a strong relationship with our kids is extremely important and doable. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is what helped you to stay on track and stay focused. I mean, I just, I, you know, I grew up, I grew up not having a dad, so I, I know how that is, and uh, I just wanted to provide for him. You know, I mean, growing up, like I, I didn't have the this this crazy story. Like I, I had, uh, I was raised by you know my my grandparents. Most people know this. Mm-hmm. I was raised by my grandparents. It wasn't like crazy tough times. We always had hot water. We always had hot meals. Every year we'd get a new shoe, new clothes for school. You know, it wasn't crazy, but I used to always, I used to always think I never, I, like my father figure was him. It's different. Like talking to my wife, I always thought I had a father figure in my life because of my grandpa. But it's not the same of actually having a, a dad. Yeah. You know, and I, I never ever thought of that. And then. Yeah, f- uh, f- trying to figure it out now. And I still trying to learn, you know. I still trying to be the daddest man on the planet and hold that title forever. But at the end of the day, it's like th- these guys, especially now, it, this we live in a time of freaking iPads and social media and stuff. I think so. You need to really be a part of your kid's life. It's like 
the generation now is just uh, the way I'd say it, just soft, you know. Like I remember when we was our age, I could go outside and and drink out the water hose even when green stuff was coming out from inside the water <laughs> yeah. house. You know I mean? yeah. guarantee. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, now these kids are probably looking at me, what is this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, they're different, you know. So I think so they need a little bit, little bit more care. And Also depends if you live in Red Hill. No, 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 no. I had to. 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 <laughs> Oh, you're not lying, though. You're not lying. Yeah. No, but that's crazy, though. Yeah, you're right, man. The kids today, it's not, it's not the same that we went through. Yeah. I remember when we were young, we would just leave the house. Oh, yeah, you could. No phones, yeah. no nothing. You just had, like, a fucking uh, lace with your key. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And that's it. You go out, and you come back six hours later. Your parents don't know where you was. Nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And then if they did know where it was, they'd, they'd beat your ass. Because you left the street. <laughs> uh, 100%. <laughs> Oh, well, you, you have your son, you know, and again, I like I said in the beginning that I, I look up to you. You're the youngest guy I look up to because of how you carry yourself, you know, you're still um, very uh, masculine, but you're not square. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to ask. No, um, I'm a, I'm a, if yeah, that's different. Ask my wife. I'm a softie, bro. I, <laughs> she always scolds me. He's like, you got to be mean to him. <laughs> you got to be mean to him. Are there any sports that your son beats you at? Uh, any sports? Yeah, because, you know, I'm pretty sure you got him into a lot of sports. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, yeah. Things. He liked to think he can outsurf me and him and my wife, but I don't know what they're watching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're watching, but he's, he's, pre- he's actually pretty good at surfing right now. He does jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu i still hold hold one in him uh uh yeah boxing and stuff i still beat him up i got i, I gotta show him all the tricks you know i gotta be able to protect myself when i get older you know? <laughs> said at all times keep a couple of secrets right? Mm-hmm. you're right oh Thanks. surfing let's go so wait so your wife is a pro surfer mm-hmm. and she takes him surfing oh all the time yeah all the time and my uh uh our grandpa his grandpa take him you know papa scott they always always say he's lucky he's this kid is spoiled that he can Sport surf, game. man. Just surfing every day is just such a blessing. This is brother. He's so lucky, bro. Like, look at him. He look. He's like what twenty shades darker than me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know he goes to the beach every day. Is the hair natural? The hair is na- natural. Bro, natural, bro. Natural. Ooh. That's how you know he's in the beach, man. <laughs> That's how you know. Dope. That's legit. Yeah, that is. I like that. Yeah, you wouldn't want him to go on you, in your footsteps, huh? No, 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 no. I would. Uh, I know what it takes to be a fighter. I did this fighting stuff. You know, go do your own shoes. You know, go fill your own shoes. Hundred percent. I mean, you but know, if he would come and he would say, "Dad, I decided tomorrow I'm signing up. I do jujitsu. I love my jujitsu. Tomorrow I'm signing up. I want to do boxing. I want to become a fighter. Then we're gonna fight. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I'm not gonna force him. Like yeah. whatever you want to oh, do. Yeah. You know, whatever you want to do. If you want. If you want to do this, you want to do that. You got my full support. But then, when you're gonna do it, just know that you're gonna work hard in it. You know, even like with surfing, he he tells her like, oh, I, I, he thinks of I want maybe I want to. He wants to compete in surfing. So we had to t- have that talk. Like, look, this is the work he's gonna do. You're gonna have to not only surf. You're gonna have to work out of the surfing. You have to not only do that. You have to make sure you're doing good in school and and doing all your chores around the house without us uh, without us reminding you and so on and so on. You know, so yeah. so whatever he wants to do. You know, if he wants to fight, I would personally not. Not want him to fight just because I know the industry, I know what it takes, I know how much uh, birthdays and family events and holidays 100%. you had to give up and all this kind of stuff. So you know, at the end of the day, I did this. You go make your own shoe. You know, even even with the shoe stuff, you know, fill your own shoes. Like even when I first was coming up, everybody was always comparing me to BJ and this and that. But it's like, bro, like I, I I'm I'm my own person. You know, I want to be my own person. I would have no relation to the dude, you know? So at the end of the day, like, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, and and I think you guys are, are completely the opposite. <laughs> yeah. I had both of you on the show, and you are, you're not, uh, you're very different. <laughs> very Thank different. You. Yeah. Both Sagittarius is too, so trippy. Yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both very special. Yeah. <laughs> I know my astrology roles. Oh, right. yes. Uh. Yeah, he was just telling us that you are a Sagittarius. He's a Sagittarius, right? Yeah. And then your wife is a Sagittarius? Yeah. BJ? Well, he's your Capricorn, right? Yeah, Cap- them two Capricorns. Yeah, Frick, I told him, I don't even know, man. Who cares? And he said, <laughs> he said it's, good, it's good to pick up chicks. <laughs> and, then, and then Royce Look at my wife My wife over there smiling yeah. Yeah. No, no like, way <laughs> like, like, Let me hear what, what Steezy would say Back in the day then. <laughs> Bob 
Marco, <laughs> brother. I'm Sagittarius. What's you? Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I actually got with uh, my other no half now, Kia. Yeah. It was, you know, I told her, I walked up to her at a party one night and I was like, you know, you're the only one who understands me. And she's like, what? And I was like, you're a Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius. We should get to know each other. And then boom. Oh, that's how wow. it all started. Okay. Three train. weeks ago, you had a daughter. Yes. Oh, my God, guys. Keep this pickup line. <laughs> it works. I'm telling you. <laughs> it works. Yeah. And then, you know, Aries over here. We have an Aries. Oh, nice. Which is a good uh, Sagittarius, like... What you guys do for Sagittarius is, is like very, um, you guys fan the flame. You okay. Know I mean? You guys really calm good. them down. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or even hype us up. Yeah. You know? And in turn, that's Josh good. Keanu, the guy who got yeah. to start fighting, he's an Aries. Oh, Fuck that's it. why my guy, I guess. Yeah, so it's like, I got you going. You know what I mean? No, he's a, no, no if, bro, I tell everybody all the time. I told Josh all the time, too. I told Josh, I told him, bro, if I never met you, I, I don't know what I would be doing. You know? I, 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 <laughs> so I probably would have been been still maybe try to do the sport or whatever i think so i would have did something you know i don't know if i was a professor i always wanted to be an officer so maybe be an officer end game but i told him bro i i, bro, I owe you a lot because yeah. like if you never give me an ass whooping that first time ever <laughs> and then he was the i always talk to um they people always trip me out when i tell the story but i started training on wednesday with him he took me wednesday he beat me up that day and then um on Thursday, we came back, and then the coach asked us, oh, hey, Max, do you want to fight? <laughs> I was like, wait, what? And then he was like, yeah, do you want to fight? They're, 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 uh, somebody just dropped out. I was, like, fighting 125 pounds at the time. He's like, <laughs> there's like, oh, somebody just dropped out the fight. You, you you can get a fight. You can get in. You'd be the first one on the card. And I was like, and what does that mean? He's like, oh, you get in the fights for free? I was like, oh, bet. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, bet, I get in the fights for free? It, bro, it was $25. This is, back, this is, this is like 2000, what, 2007? $35. Asking your, grandparents, asking your grandparents for $35? They're going to yeah. look at me crazy. Like, bro, you, what are you doing? Are you yeah. doing drugs? Like, you know what I mean? So I was thinking like, but all, and then all I had to do was just get the consent, you know, from my parents, like uh, uh, from my mom. Because I stood uh, 16. So if you're oh, under 18, you got to get signed. So I tell my mom, mom. Man, there's this thing, this kickboxing event stuff going on, and um, they want me to fight. She's like, "Oh yeah, when is it?" And I was like, "Saturday," <laughs> and this is Thursday. <laughs> and she was like, "She was like, oh, my mom, my mom is wired different." She got, "Oh, okay, don't get, don't get your ass kicked." Like, Let's go. <laughs> okay, perfect. You know, so that's she, consent. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah. She ended up giving the consent to my uh, to my coach at the time. He could sign for me, and when the when I ended up actually winning, I kicked in the face three times, but I ended up winning, so it was good. You know, sixteen, bro. It's it's always funny to think because when you said that your wife said that you like uh, that you were like, you know, like such a softy, and then I think about your last four minutes of almost every fight when you just bang it out, and I'm like softy, and that four minutes it just doesn't go wrong. <laughs> so it's amazing how you can be both people. You can be a soft. And, and emotional and, and it, emotional intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, uh, uh, it's just, I mean, you guys watch football? You ever watch football? I'm not a big football You're fan. You're not a big football no, fan? Football. You football? You like, you big Eagles fan? Uh, no, actually. Yeah. I'm a big Cowboys yeah. fan. Yeah, but you know, okay, then you know who Brian Dawkins is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember Brian Dawkins, yeah. right? It, it, it's what Brian Dawkins said that said it great. You know what I mean? There's two things, you know, like, when I'm outside the the cage, yeah, I'm Max Holloway, this and that. But when I'm in there, I, I'm blessed. You know what I mean? Like you got you got two different identities for a reason. You know, like you got to turn it off. When I'm out in the world and stuff, yeah, you guys see the nice side, the Max Holloway, the cool side. But when we get in there, it's business. You know what I mean? Like, what is it? Weapon X, right? Was Brian Dawkins or oh, Animal X, whatever it was? Yeah. yeah Remember, he was yeah. the X. Like yeah. Brian Dawkins is a nice dude, bro. Interview, or whatever, and then they go in there, they change. Once they step on that field, the X monster comes out. You know, it's the same thing. You know, you need. You need these identities, you know what I mean? You need these different identities, and you gotta go. Don't do not do none of that thing like um, like Glass or whatever. What is that movie where that guy has like 27 different oh, personalities? Yeah, yeah. Mis- yeah, don't be that guy, but you need you need, you need need this kind of identities, you know, to go out there and uh, go out there and perform. So when, so you're, you you call yourself Max Blessed Holloway. Uh-huh. Why blessed? Ble- uh, actually, blessed because your hands are blessed because no, your no. your talent you're blessed with talent why no. is it blessed I actually was was my old coach I was a little evil and then like I said we was team rootless at the time and then we changed our name to God's Army and I remember after one of my professional fights I think so it was the fourth one some random guy came up to me and told me like bro like uh 
uh, uh, you guys is God's army and and this and that. You guys rep. I know you guys rep in the uh, 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 saying the word. But why little evil? And then the guy just left. After he said that, he just left without me even answering. Oh. And I was like, I never saw that guy again in my life. I didn't even know who the guy was. The guy just came up to me after the fight, told me not to disappear. Shout out to the guy that disappeared. Yeah. So I was like, bro, I was like, I don't know what that is. I remember telling my coach, and then I was like, bro, I was like, I don't know if I like use little evil anymore. You know, like yeah, we are repping and uh, repping the Lord and stuff and. This and that, and he's like, ah, oh, you can't. And then he was like, telling me, you can't let like these guys come in and try to change your thoughts and blah blah. blah. I was like, ah, it kind of makes sense. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he, was, he, was he like, got a point, the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then he was like, and then he was like, yeah, okay. He was like, okay, just give me, give me, give me a time. And this was right after the fight. So one week I didn't go to the gym. Came back one day and told him, so what? He was like, what? I asked him, so what? Do you have a name? And he was like. He's like, oh man, I'm stuck. I can't really think of nothing. And I was like, he's, he's like, I only been thinking about one thing. I was like, then what is it? And then he was like, blessed. And I was like, I'll take it. He's like, take what? I was like, I said, I'll take the nickname blessed. And he's like, I was just thinking the word. I didn't say it was a nickname. I was like, well, I'll take it. And then, so and since then, went from there. Yeah, I just blessed. changed my nickname to blessed. Yeah. Maybe oh. maybe you are blessed. I mean, it's you're definitely blessed. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But that could that's even like a serendipitous godsend yeah. that some random person would show up, say bro, it, and know. disappear, not but even wait said, for an answer. Yeah, he didn't wait for an answer. He told yeah. me this and he walked away, bro. And yeah. I never ever saw that guy in my life again. I was kind of tripping out. That is nuts. So, this is happened. crazy. Yeah, it happened. So Max blessed Holloway. Yeah. What is the one thing that you can really say that you? feel really blessed about all your career that got you to a, a certain fight that winning it changed you that you felt really really blessed because when I saw you for example I saw you in a lot of shitty situations uh -huh. but you won yeah and that I felt I felt that you called blessed because of that yeah because you can lift yourself up from those shitty moments mm -hmm. and get knocked you know fucking boom 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 yeah. but suddenly something changes yeah. and something in your eyes is changing and you become blessed and you become like a different machine yeah i mean the main thing is just being able to wake up every day and have the life i have you know see see my wife see my son um and and just being here being from where i'm from i'm not supposed to be here i'm not supposed to be sitting in front of here i'm not supposed to be doing what I'm doing, I'm not supposed to be talking and spreading positivity, you know what I mean, I'm supposed to be, uh, 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 I'm going to scrub this word, my wife is going to laugh, but I always scrub on this word, a, a, a statistic, I'm supposed to be a statistic, you know what I mean, <laughs> I, always, I always scrub, yeah. that's what I'm supposed to be, that's what she said, she told, she even told me this, and then, and I, every day I wake up and bless, like I'm, I'm not, you yeah. know what I mean, I'm not, I'm one of those guys who got out, and, yeah. and I, I, and hopefully, you know what I mean, I tell everybody all the time, like, my, my end goal, you know, like, I always, like, want to be a world champion, make a lot of money. This is all nice stuff, but my end goal is that if I can change one person's life, then, then it's complete, you know? My grandpa always told me that uh, if we uh, if we can leave this world better than when we than the world that we came in, then we did a good job, you know? And, it, and, it, and it's contagious from that on, you know? So if I can change one person's life, and they can change some person's life, and, you know, little by little, we just... Uh, I'm sure you world. changed many, many people's lives. So I do. We, we got, we got a lot more to do. So you know, I got, I got a lot more to do. A lot more that I want to do, and I know I can do. So. so what, what are your plans? Share with us. Share with us and the listeners. Like, what are the plans? What, what do you see, Max Holloway, in the next five, eight, ten years? Five, eight, ten years. You know, uh, hopefully a couple more years. I got a couple more fighting in me. You know, what I mean, I really wanna. I really want to get uh not 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 everybody's keep oh go get your 45 belt back and blah blah I want to get multiple belts so if I can get multiple weight classes you know even that BMF belt look kind of fun they just announced that, that that BMF belt look that that that's some fun matchups for me too but so would you go at 170 no but I go whatever weight they want to I don't uh, the, we warriors you know like, like I said back in the day. This ancient gladiator warriors, they didn't walk around with weights and be like the scales and be like, be like, wait, 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 how big are you stepping on the scale? Okay, I can't fight you. Bro. You're a bit out of my kilograms. You know, no, no, we we fight. You know what I mean? And that's what we do. So I'm a fight. But then I, other than that, then I want to actually give back to my community. You know, so like right now, I don't know how much I can say, but me and UFC is like uh, trying to work with uh, the Boys and Girls Club out, out in uh, out in Waianae. Mm. We're trying to do something, uh, a program, and um, Hopefully we can announce it soon, but 
that's the kind of stuff I want to give back. You know, my wife always uh, is on me and being like, "Look, all the great, all this great stuff you do, but at the end of the day, if you're not giving back to the community and and the people who actually started, and this this place is what made me, yeah, and, and changing and, and and encouraging kids and making kids realize 100%. that like, look, I came from you. You know, I I remember when I used to, I I haven't d- done it in a while, but when I was going to the intermediate and they they put me in my science class, and I was telling like guys like. Well, I was sitting in the seats. Like, this is my seat. Mr. Smotis was stood there. I don't know if Mr. Smotis is there. Mr. Smotis, if you stood there, shout out to you. He used to, <laughs> he used to deal. He used to put up with me, bro. I was I was a bad kid. I was a hotted kid. I was terrible. I was in the office all the time. I was a terrible kid in like seven, eight grades. All the elementary, ninth grade, I really, I changed my life because I was like, I I need, I want to play professional baseball. I need good grades and I and I need a scholarship. So, but seventh eighth grade, I just tell these kids like, look. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Finish off strong. And if I can be that, if I can do some type of program, you know, we always partner up with the Hawaii Food Bank for some stuff. But just giving out, you know, giving opportunities to 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 the next generation. That's amazing. That's that's what we really need more people. And you know, it's 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 a bummer that actually famous people need to do it instead of the government taking care of all of that crap. Yeah. Yeah, but it's tough, man. knowing that this is the situation, we rely on people like yourself and people, you know, yeah, like yourself, that they're actually going to do it, that actually care and come back and show us that it's possible and that we can and give everybody equal and, and make us feel worthy. You know? Oh, yeah, we are worthy. You know, everybody's worthy. Uh, a lot of people is just, the main thing I tell people is like they put too much put too much effort to certain things and it's like bro like this guy is not going to change your life you know like or even like i trip out of how hardcore some some fans are for like certain certain sports and stuff i was like bro these guys don't know who you are bro relax yeah. you're trying to fight yeah. over these guys like <laughs> yeah. bro these guys do not give a hell what, what's going on with you you know yeah. like if you put that much effort into something of your personal life i'm pretty sure it would be way more better so yeah at the end of the day it's just it's just giving opportunities and and, and just Given information that a lot of, a lot of these guys are not getting, you know, especially 100%. with right now, it's like everybody have a phone, everybody's a doctor, everybody's a teacher, <laughs> yep. you know, go, go, like Google this AI stuff is is outrageous. Yeah, right Chat now, GPT so. gonna fuck us up. It already is. <laughs> gonna bro. fuck us up. Crazy. I just saw. I was telling Brad. I just saw. Um, they did um, he just chose he told Chad GPT to make Many Men you know the song Many Men 50 Cent yeah but he did it with Tupac and Biggie you listen to that track it blows your mind bro it's no, sensational it's I, I heard I heard the one that they did with um, what the Drake ones no not the Drake oh, the ones Drake that was they, hot did, they did one with Little John and an old time singer so Little John's uh, uh, Windows to the Wall yeah and then they made the old singer sing it, like an old time, like a like an old seventies or sixties singer sing. I was like, this is insane, bro. Yeah. Right, you can insane. do anything. Like, yeah. we're not insane. safe. But it's not gonna have empathy. Exactly. So that's yeah. something we gotta rely on as humans and just continue to show that for people. Yeah. You know, many people are scared of AI. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Because you know, it can it can mimic that with us. You know. Yeah. So, it cannot, yeah. but it will. It will change a lot of what we do. We yeah. will have to relearn or unlearn things that we do uh, that, that we do on a daily, yeah. because it's just going to take over. And right now, I mean, with that having songs and art, did you see the art one? The art yeah. was crazy. The That's art is nuts. insane, bro. Just paint me da 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 da. Even <laughs> even people's essays, like now they have programs oh, to find it. Yeah, because yeah, they that's... gotta find it. Because people are just typing on write me a, a yeah yeah yeah. Letter, wrote a, yeah. A Twenty thousand le- uh, essay on this people. Yeah, it's it's insane, bro. Yeah, but Chat GPT not gonna no pigeon cause. <laughs> we got our own secret language. You'll be all right. True that. True yeah. that. True that. <laughs> So what would you want to share with our, um, you know, with our people? If you had one thing to share with them, what is something that you would want to share with the listeners? Um, I mean, I mean, I think we've been sharing everything, right? <laughs> you know, like the self-belief. Keep, keep is there anything going. else that you would like to accomplish in your sport? You said you want to get the 145, maybe the uh, baddest motherfucker. Is there <laughs> anything else that you want to do after? I'm talking about done UFC, you're out. Where do we want to be? I have no idea, to be honest. You know, maybe. Where does your wife want you to be? I, my wife wants to be on vacations. I think. (laughs) She wants to travel travel on surf trips. Yes. She wants to do surf trips. She wants me to. She actually, she always teases me. She wants me to see me do like a strike mission. It's it's like when, like when, uh, when 
like all of a sudden swell is coming you go to the swells and yeah. she wants to see me rough it and see if i can rough it she, don't think, she thinks i'm a softy that i can't rough it on <laughs> on some of her shifters that she did so i always talk talk a big game but whenever she talks about it, it's kind of like yeah it's something surfing is, is yeah it's not it's no, surfing is crazy no she's crazy she charges it's crazy I, I i i do not charge some of the ways she charges i look at them like you are crazy you are guy tell her like she's like you get punched in the face blah, blah, blah. i'm like yeah but then i can move and i can punch the person back this ocean slammed me i can't punch, wait, wait, yeah. punch the water <laughs> <laughs> yeah take this why you slam me on this piece of reef you know what i mean no i can't do none of that it just, it just hurts your ego you get slammed you're getting worked you know so it, what she do what they do is crazy but I, I we see you know i i i'm like I'm huge into like gaming stuff right now, esports and and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, so, so share with us also how did you because you mentioned before you got here um, through Royce and then you playing with Royce paintball. How did Max Holloway, the world champion, the one and only, the biggest guy from Hawaii, started to suddenly out of nowhere decide to go paint paintball? Oh man, we was we was playing airsoft, so we okay. were playing airsoft and we had like the real guns and whatever, and then. I don't know. Like, I just wasn't, like, it, we was playing airsoft. It was so much fun with all the cousins. And then we, we kind of got into that, that little world of, of airsoft people. And it was just, it, it was a lot of, like, young people. You know what I mean? A lot of young kids and this and that. So it was just young kids just having fun, you know? And then I ended up, I ended up one day trying paintball. And I was like, holy shit, this is fun. And, and be, like, How does a world champion even have time to... Bro, you need you need you need your off time. Like I I trip out. I trip out when when I see people say all I do is live for fighting and blah blah blah. I'm like, brother, you are insane. Like this is crazy. Like you can't be thinking of fighting 24/7, bro. You're gonna kill yourself. <laughs> just eyeing you know? out the cash register guy. Yeah. Oh, he chose a left. Right now. <laughs> I what would I do? <laughs> yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Like you can't you can't do that. You know you gotta have your you gotta have your off days. You know like before. Before playing paintball or anything, I always had hobbies, you know what I mean? I, I was trying, I thought I thought so, I was surfing, but when my wife came in, she let me know that I wasn't surfing. <laughs> so that one, one of the things I got, you know, by the long boards, you know, the waist arms, and yeah. I thought I was surfing, <laughs> but I guess wasn't. If she, she'd always tell me that's not surfing, so I was like, yeah, okay, wow. but. Bro, are you that. making the world champion wow. look bad on the board? <laughs> Wavestorm still oh, surf. Did, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I keep saying. That's what I keep saying. But, um, you know, that and then I was into, like, I love fast cars, whatever. So when we had the K1 Speed out here, that was super fun. That was one of my hobbies. It's kind of expensive, but I love doing that. That was super fun doing that. But I just love taking things away from fighting. Like, guys who, like, I live, eat, and breathe fighting. I'm like, bro, you crazy. Like, and you I heard too you're a gamer of, too, yeah? Yeah, and I love gaming. So yeah. I love playing games. Stacey was telling me, oh, this guy's a gamer. I'm like... Who, bro? Max Holloway is a gamer. Yeah, bro. yeah. One of the one of the biggest deals in gaming, Facebook gaming. Yeah. What yeah. is that? Explain. So, uh, it's, so it's so it's live streaming. So you stream, and then I got a deal with uh, Facebook Gaming where I stream exclusively on Facebook Live while yeah. I'm playing any game I want to play. So streaming. You just play your game at home, and you do, and and then yeah, people and then can people watch you. Yeah, people come in, they talk, they comment, they donate, they say stuff, talk yeah. shit. You know he was I mean? one of the first virtual characters that Mark Zuckerberg made for his news conference or something. Like yeah, he was in yeah, a room yeah, in with the Mark. Meta, in the metaverse thing. Yeah, the, the metaverse. Meta, meta, meta meetings during the COVID stuff. He was like, shit. Yeah, it was super cool. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, it was super cool doing talking stars on him. And then that guy's like a big. Uh, Mark is like a big MMA fan. Yeah, fan, yeah he just so. started out trying to. Yeah, like, he just started. He did like jiu-jitsu tournaments, and yeah. he ended up winning. So you know, good for him. Has he? That's awesome. Has he hit you up to come train? Yeah, maybe, bro. Maybe yeah. he said. He said maybe. He said. He said. Uh, the, he told me that uh, when when the times he is down here. So if it works out, it works out. He looks like not. he's a good size, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right? he looked like a big boy. Yeah. Right? He looked about six something for yeah. sure. It's so Good crazy to see. to see him though in the competition. I saw the video of him you know, <laughs> yeah. in the competition. Like, it is Mark Zuckerberg. He's fit. Like, if he, if I were to take all the billionaires and put them in a room, him. Uh, but he's still Amazon young, guy. man. What? He's thirty something, no? Yeah, he's young. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, I think he's young. I mean, he might be no. I think so. He's forty, maybe. 40. No way, man. No way. I'm forty. He's like thirty six or. 34. Is he only mid? Oh my god! Try yeah, ask Siri, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you know, being, so you're good with hand-eye coordination stuff. You like gaming, fighting, uh, paintball. Royce has uh, mentioned that paintball yeah. in the sport, uh -huh. and this is something that blew my mind. You can dodge a paintball if you're good enough. 
Oh yeah. Have you it. dodged a paintball before? Oh, a couple of times, you know what I mean? And then a couple of times you get gawked, I think it's how you get cyclone right here. It's not funny. <laughs> it, it, it depends what ball we're shooting that day. Like if we're shooting a bright color ball, I'm, I, like, you're, most of us are going to get out the way. But if it's like dark purple and I, I, like, I use like a, a colored lens. So if it's like dark, if it's dark, like you can't see, like you don't see it until the thing is like right here. Oh shit. But if it's like bright yellow balls flying is all red, it's like you see those balls coming at you. And you can slip them. Yeah, bro, you just slip them right in real fast. You just pop in and pop out. Bro. It's a bunker, bro. <laughs> Sorry, that just that was something that blew but my mind. He has the best head movement in well, the game. Of course, I mean, he can I mean, duck I mean, him. I mean, I mean, I mean the, the gun is not right here. Like slip this, boom. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, not that. This guy's like a couple yards back. You know what I mean? We looking and and we looking at where it's called lanes. Like we are looking at lanes. Like we know, like okay, we're probably gonna get shoot from this lane. So when you pop out, you see something there. Oh sh! You know, like oh shit, get back in. Nah, I would have to just eat him. I don't think I can do it. <laughs> Literally <laughs> eat him, like. <laughs> <laughs> Just catch him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, Royce came back uh, the other day with a uh, hematoma uh, oh, from a competition. Yeah, 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 I'm like, yeah. They're using the soft The, the soft first thing ears. that came to my mind was Mark Hominick. You remember oh, Mark yeah, Hominick? Oh, yeah, when he fought Aldo? Aldo? Oh, yeah, like, remember? oh, my God. <laughs> That's yeah, what that I thought. Thing, yeah. And what, he had a, from yeah. a paintball? Oh, yeah. paintball, because the paintball size his face is gone, because... Oh. He should have put a caption on it. I told him, oh, put a caption in and uh, put the put the caption saying you should see the other guy. <laughs> it was cool. a big one. Yeah. It was a big one. Well, Max, you know, to have you here was uh, absolutely sensational. And I think, you know, the message that you tell to our, you know, listeners is um, extremely positive and definitely, um, you know, going to hype them up to do and pursue their dream and what they really really want um you know we wanted to do something very very special for you and uh we know that technically you know you can get whatever you want you can buy yourself whatever you want you don't need us to buy you anything so we wanted to do something so special that you couldn't do it yourself and we hooked up with a guy his name is Louis Rossignol who is a beautiful artist that we carry at the gallery Waikiki and he made two amazing uh, portraits of you they're all originals and I want to oh, give it to you from all of us for sharing uh, with us your time uh, thank you this is the first one. This is the first one for you. This is sick. Ooh, let's go. Yes, sir. And one oh, for the blessed. Sick, the picture too. For the blessed Halloween. Oh, this hey. is sick, yeah. This one is sick too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, my wife is gonna love them. Yeah, Just so if art. you don't have enough from him, there you have another two pictures. <laughs> no, she's an artist. She loves them. Oh, this is sick. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. coming, man. It was. No, thanks for having. Sorry, sorry, bro, bro. Traffic was crazy, bro. Sorry for the traffic. It's it's you know we had so a like, lot of people. Did you stay out in Ankuli? No, no. no? I live in Kamuki now. Oh, unreal! Yeah, I had to. What's you should not drop the video of Monaco. I know, but I'm working town. Nah, nah, I just joking. He became one townie, bro. I just joking. I just joking. Well, yeah. I was joking. Yeah, I know. For that I know, bro, exact traffic is, reason. Bro, traffic is crazy. Bro, but then, but then it's 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 fine because like when I train and whatever, I get to kind of make my own schedule. You know what I mean? So I kind of know when the stuff is. But so, like, was crazy. I put my phone in. The hour. I was like, bro, Royce, I'm not. Like, I thought it was, my mind was gonna be like 45 minutes. Yeah. The thing was hour half. I was like, oh, what is going oh, on? I was like, Friday, bro. That's why. Right. I was like, I was like, Royce, bro, I'm I'm coming late, brother. Please don't shoot me. <laughs> Yeah, right. He's going to remember this on the pinball field. <laughs> <laughs> so remember you show up. He's not going to pay for that. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to bunker me. Bro. Or shoot me in the back of the head. We'll be teaming. Shoot me. Bro. Shoot me right in the back. Bro. I shoot one of our friends in the back of the head. We're on the team team, bro. And he's like in my shot and he duck up. Boom. Right oh. the I'm going to be, I'm telling you, Royce is going to do that to me. Like, oh, I'm so sorry, bro. <laughs> I call it now on the pod. So when I get in when I one picture, like, yeah, thank you, Royce. You guys know why. Yeah. <laughs> we know why. Uh, Steezy, it was such an honor to have you. Um, yes. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, yes. To have you as a co-host is a, a huge honor. Hell yeah, and I'm I couldn't down, think bro. of anyone better to be with me on this table. Brett, you're a legend. Royce, thank you for setting this up. Rush, Alessa, thank you so much for coming here. Max. You're the man, man. We thank love you. you. No, thank we you, love Johnny. You. Thank you. This is good fun. 
All right. We're out. Yes, sir. We're out.